said that and done it, I know you impressed her. She time to well, I'm going to pick up you. I have a few remarks I've laid out here on the subject that uh, it has to do with some of the thinking that went into our tax reform proposal. We created that proposal to promote fairness and growth and simplicity and to put the family first. And the present tax system is unfair and we want to change it. I'm sure you've all read recently, because there's been a lot of press attention given this, that almost 30,000 persons who earned a quarter of a million dollars or more last year paid virtually no taxes. And I'm sure that some of those probably represented legitimate losses of one kind or another, were legitimate, but I'm also sure that a great many of them represented taking advantage of the loopholes in our present confusing tax system. But we want to change that and make sure that everyone pays his fair share and no one pays more than his or her fair share. Our plan provides for lower rates, an increase in the personal exemption, and better security for homemakers, and we're cutting the number of tax brackets from 14 down to 3. This new three-bracket system will have tax rates of 15, 25, and 35 percent. A majority of Americans would pay lower taxes under our plan. For example, taxpayers in the $20,000 to $50,000 income range would receive a 7.2% overall reduction. That is, of course, say, say we're averaging. And I'm quite conscious of the fact that a man drowned once trying to wade across a river that was, whose average depth was only three feet. <laughs> <laughs> Taxpayers making under $20,000 would receive an 18.3% reduction, and those making under 10000 would get a 35.5% average reduction. Now, while our proposal is designed to promote fairness and equity, it will also encourage growth in the economy. I don't need to tell you the relationship between a, a dynamic and growing economy and the vitality of our nation's families. It's not saying too much to say that as the family goes, so goes the nation. And yet, in spite of that, the public policy of our nation has, particularly in the tax policies, worked against the interests of the family for decades now. One of the clearest examples of this is the loss in the value of the personal and dependency exemption. In 1948, the amount of that exemption was $600, and there it remained for more than 30 years before we raised the exemption to $1,000 in 1981 and indexed it for inflation so that today it's $1,080. A centerpiece in our tax exemption, or tax proposal, I should say, will be raising that exemption to $2,000 and, again, indexing it to inflation. We're also putting equal treatment for the homemakers into the tax code. Our plan would allow homemakers to provide for security in their later years by allowing a full deduction, which is not allowed now, of up to $2,000 for an individual retirement account thing we call the IRAs. And a couple with one spouse in the labor market and one in the home would be eligible for a total deduction of $4,000. Now, I appreciate the work that you've done to strengthen the family, to defend the right to life, to stop pornography, to preserve parental rights and education. I appreciate your past expressions of support for our tax reform proposals. Next month, when Congress comes back, we'll face a strong and mobilized troop of special interests. But I'm confident we can keep to our timetable of enacting a tax reform bill by the year's end. I need your help. And I'm not a bit embarrassed about asking you to give it to me. And I have faith that you'll come through because you, you always have. And again, I apologize for taking advantage of you here, but the foxholes have already been dug all around the capital with a special interest group, so I figured that the meal come out trying to mobilize the troops is, <laughs> is all right. Thank you again. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, <clears throat> we want to assure you that, first of all, we are so pleased that you have reaffirmed your faith in the private sector and particularly fraternal benefit societies and volunteerism in this tax package. 
uh, we, we really are pleased with the family aspects of it and the points you made in your presentation, doubling up on the tax exemption, providing for the housewife. This builds family life, and, and you can count on our support, full support in that regard. Oh, thank you very much. And I'm also pleased to tell you that we're so, so pleased with the strong position you've taken consistently, but again recently, to reaffirm the position that was enunciated at the family meeting in Mexico City a year ago. And even further, the encouragement you're giving the Justice Department on trying to overthrow Roe versus Wade. Yes. I, I still say the answer to that whole problem is very simple, and the Constitution uh, already covers those people. If we can simply get a recognition of what I think is borne out by all the medical science and evidence that we now have, the unborn child is a living human being and therefore entitled to the protection of the Constitution. You spelled that out so well in our meeting in years ago, and uh, that still is a, a, a tremendous statement, which should hope that more and more people in this country will find. I received, I received a car the, at Bethesda after my operation came from within the building. And it was the greatest proof in the world. The nurses had sent it up and, and made this card, and handmade card and everything, and then had the names of all the, this group of little babies that were in, the, in that department, uh, the mm -hmm. hospital right then, with their footprints. <laughs> and by each name, they had the length of time of the pregnancy. These were all premature babies. Mm -hmm. And down to the ages that anyone says now are still, uh, mm -hmm. one people on the other side say are not living beings. And here they were with their little tiny living footprints on that it card. Was it was quite a dramatic message. <laughs> Mr. President, we also want you to know that we support you in your efforts in Central America. Oh, bless you and thank you very much. We've been invited to many of the workshops and where your staff has always been so cooperative. But, so we're informed and we're convinced that you're on the right track. And, uh, we want you, we'll give you the support that you need in that regard. Well, I appreciate your name very much. Mr. President, you should know that the Knights of Columbus was forthcoming with a very special gift to the new Bishop uh, Obama de Bravo in Nicaragua, and this is very helpful and supportive. We owe you a debt mm -hmm. of gratitude for that. You might be interested to know that I made a telephone call to a bishop out in Iowa who had come back from Nicaragua, and who had appeared in the press as citing he had been leading a group of refugees toward the Honduran border. And the story in the press was that they had been attacked by the Contras. And I called him, and he said he couldn't understand it. He said, yes, he had been leading this group of refugees, but they were attacked by the Salvadoran regular army, not by him, he said, and rescued by the Contras. <laughs> There's a great deal of disinformation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that you have a meeting to get to. And, uh, Mr. President, I want to say this one word. Express it here. I personally, there's so many others like me, admire your attitude, your true Christian human attitude, and a lot of the problems of today. Many a time in my own group, this big group too, we represent, that same thought comes, that you have a true Christian attitude, a true human attitude, in so many of these problems that are affecting humanity today. I want to thank you and congratulate you for that. I thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. I, I have come to realize that what Abraham Lincoln once said about this job is absolutely true. That he had come to realize he could not carry out the responsibilities of the job for one day if he could not fall to his knees and ask help from one who is wiser than all others. 
Bishop is our Supreme Chaplain. He's 90 years young, and he's still leading us uh, to greater heights all the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> if we, if we both realize one thing, our respective ages, and that is getting old is 15 years from where you are now. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>